Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a $99 Lenovo laptop I picked up for Black Friday. I believe this sale will still be going on Cyber Monday, so I'll leave some links in the description. So how good could a $99 laptop be? Well, we're going to find out here. Keep in mind, this is a low-powered laptop. It is not a gaming laptop whatsoever. But if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know I'm a big fan of these lightweight, low-cost laptops. And last year, I actually picked up a similar deal from Best Buy, but it was an Asus laptop. For 120. This has been my go-to travel slash emulation laptop for the last year, and it still works fine. But when this Lenovo deal popped up, I figured I'd jump right on it. For $99, I kind of knew exactly what I was getting for the price, and I was more than happy to pay it. So in this video, I'm going to be testing out this $99 Lenovo laptop. We're going to get into some video playback, or run some benchmarks, we'll test some PC games, and then by the end, we'll get into some emulation. Getting right into the specs, for the CPU we have the Intel N4000, this is a dual core x86 CPU at 1.1 GHz with a burst up to 2.6. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 600, we have 2 GB of LPDDR4 RAM, they do offer a 4 GB variant but it's much more expensive. This is all about the $99 version for Black Friday. The screen is 11.6 inches at 1366 by 768, 64 GB of built-in storage plus a micro SD card slot, and you can always expand storage over USB if you want to. 802.11ac Wi-Fi so it does pick up that 5 GHz network, Bluetooth 4.0, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB Type-C port, full-size HDMI, and the 3.5mm audio jack on the side. A 32 watt hour battery and Lenovo is claiming up to 8 hours of battery life, I'd say it's more around 6. And it does come preloaded with Windows 10 and S mode, but you can always upgrade to Windows 10 Home for free using the Microsoft App Store, and that's exactly what I did with this machine. So obviously this isn't a top tier machine, but I think it's well worth $99 if you need a small laptop to travel with to check your email, watch Netflix, YouTube, and play some really light games, and it also handles emulation quite well for what it is. So I did pull the back cover off just to take a look real quick. Here's our main board with the RAM soldered. This is non-user upgradable. Have that huge battery which is taking up most of the space. Dual stereo speakers, our little daughter board for the USB and micro SD card on the right hand side. But there's no extra M.2 slots in here, so you can't add your own storage. And like I said, the RAM is non-user upgradable, so you're going to be stuck with what you get. The trackpad and keyboard function quite well for a low-cost laptop. It does have multi-touch built into that trackpad, and the keyboard is sufficient for what you're paying here. So the first thing I usually like to do with these low-cost laptops is run a few benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 4. On the single-core side, we scored a 1,807, multi-core 3,083. These are definitely not top-tier scores here, but it does blow the X5 Atoms and the E-Series Atoms out of the water. Next on the list is Cinebench R15. I usually run this on all of my devices, so I figured I'd go ahead and test it here. I was sure we were going to score pretty low because we only have two cores with two threads, and I was correct. Overall score on Cinebench R15, 124. Obviously, this is a very low score, but I'm personally not going to be doing any major rendering on this device. But one of the main things I will use this for is web browsing, email checking, online document editing, and watching YouTube. And this little laptop paired with the N4000 is perfect for that use case scenario. So we're going to head over to YouTube and load up a 1080p video and just see how it performs. I'll turn on stats for nerds just to see if we have any drop frames. And using Edge, I don't think we will with this chipset. And just in case I forgot to mention it, this does have dual stereo speakers built in. So far we have no drop frames at all on this 1080p video and it's looking pretty good here. So if you're in the market for a small, lightweight, low cost laptop for email checking, online document editing using something like Google Docs, YouTube streaming, Netflix streaming, I can definitely recommend this Lenovo, but keep in mind this is a very low end laptop and the price reflects that. It's far from a gaming machine, but either way I know people are going to ask about it so I'm going to test out a couple PC games and we're going to keep them light and old because this is a low end chipset. So I had to go with some older games because this is a very low power laptop. Here we have Left 4 Dead 2 and we're getting an average of around 35 FPS which is much more than I ever thought it would be. Keep in mind this is on the very lowest preset and I am using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth to play this one here. But the performance with these older source based games is actually really good for a $99 laptop. Thank you. 
Next up, we have Dirt 3 set to low at 720p and we're getting over 30 FPS. Again, this was very surprising. The next game I wanted to test was Dead Cells. This is a much newer game than the last two I tested, but it's a 2D based game and you can't quite hit 60 with it. It will stay over 30 all day long, but 60 is pretty much out of the question on this low end device. The last PC game I wanted to test before I move over to some emulation was CSGO, and unfortunately, performance is horrible with this. 720p, lowest settings, the RAM is just maxed out here. And even if you had the 4GB variant of this device, I don't think we'd get over 23 FPS with this one. So it wasn't handling those PC games very well, but when you move over to emulation, it's a different story. Here's some N64 using Project 64. This is GoldenEye 007 upscaled to 1080p. Every once in a while you will notice a stutter, but overall N64 will be very playable on this device. And the internal resolution of the game is upscaled to 1080p, but this is pretty much a 720p display, so when you back that off, you probably won't have any stutters. I just wanted to see how far I could take it. Next up, we have some really great Dreamcast emulation using the ReDream emulator. I am upscaled to 1280 by 960 and everything's working fine here. I do have the FPS listed in the top left hand corner. I figured I'd go ahead and also test out some Sega Saturn emulation. I'm using RetroArch with the Yobasa and Shiro core. Now while I really don't like this core because it's not that accurate, it does run great on this little laptop. And finally, at least for this video, we have the Dolphin emulator running a few GameCube games. As you can see here, performance on this little laptop is pretty good. I'm actually really impressed by this thing. Now, every once in a while, you will see some frame dips here and there, but overall, for a $99 laptop, I think performance with GameCube games is really good. So you'll have really good luck with most of the popular games that work well with Dolphin, like Soul Calibur 2 here. We're running at 60 FPS. We do get some dips every once in a while, but I'm not feeling it here while I'm playing. But this doesn't mean that the laptop will run every single GameCube game at full speed. Here we have Automotalista. This is just a harder one to emulate and I always like to test it. As you can see, we're around 45 to 47 FPS. So in the end, I really do think that this is well worth $99. Any more than that and I wouldn't have picked it up. The regular price on these is $199 and if you're looking to get one of these at regular price, don't do it. I would save about 50 more dollars and pick something up in the $250 range that's a bit bigger with more power. But if you can pick one of these up for $99 and you're in the market for a lightweight, low-cost laptop, 
this is a great little deal. So this did come preloaded with Windows 10, but there's no reason I couldn't install Linux on it. So if you're interested in checking out a video with this thing running Linux, just let me know in the comments below. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I know a lot of people have probably already picked these up because it did look like a great deal. And in my opinion, it definitely is. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this device, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.